Book Fourth, Chapter Eleven of Ben Hur by Lou Wallace. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Eleven. What time the lower horn of a new moon touched the castellated piles on Mount Sulpius, and two-thirds of the people of Antioch were out on their housetops, comforting themselves with the night breeze when it blew, and with fans when it failed, Simonides sat in the chair which had come to be a part of him, and from the terrace looked down over the river, and his ships a-swing at their moorings. The wall at his back cast its shadow broadly over the water to the opposite shore. Above him the endless tramp upon the bridge went on. Esther was holding a plate for him containing his frugal supper, some wheaten cakes, light as wafers, some honey, and a bowl of milk, into which he now and then dipped the wafers after dipping them into the honey. Malik is a laggard tonight he said showing where his thoughts were do you believe he will come esther asked unless he has taken to the sea or the desert and is yet following on he will come simonides spoke with quiet confidence he may write she said not so esther he would have dispatched a letter when he found he could not return and told me so because i have not received such a letter I know he can come, and will. I hope so, she said very softly. Something in the utterance attracted his attention. It might have been the tone, it might have been the wish. The smallest bird cannot light upon the greatest tree without sending a shock to its most distant fiber. Every mind is, at times, no less sensitive to the most trifling words. You wish him to come, Esther? he asked. Yes she said lifting her eyes to his why can you tell me he persisted because she hesitated then began again because the young man is the stop was full our master is that the word yes and you still think i should not suffer him to go away without telling him to come if he chooses and take us and all we have all esther the goods the shekels the ships the slaves and the mighty credit which is a mantle of cloth of gold and finest silver spun for me by the greatest of the angels of men success she made no answer does that move you nothing no he said with the slightest taint of bitterness well well i have found esther the worst reality is never unendurable when it comes out from behind the clouds through which we at first see it darkly never not even the rack i suppose it will be so with death and by that philosophy the slavery to which we are going must after a while become sweet it pleases me even now to think what a favored man our master is the fortune cost him nothing not an anxiety not a drop of sweat not so much as a thought it attaches to him undreamed of and in his youth and esther let me waste a little vanity with the, the reflection he gets what he could not go into the market and buy with all the pelf in a sum thee my child my darling thou blossom from the tomb of my lost rachel he drew her to him and kissed her twice once for herself once for her mother say not so she said when his hand fell from her neck let us think better of him he knows what sorrow is and will set us free ah thy instincts are fine esther and thou knowest i lean upon them in doubtful cases where good or bad is to be pronounced of a person standing before thee as he stood this morning but but his voice rose and hardened these limbs upon which i cannot stand this body drawn and beaten out of human shape 
they are not all i bring him of myself oh no no i bring him a soul which has triumphed over torture and roman malice keener than any torture i bring him a mind which has eyes to see gold at a distance farther than the ships of solomon sailed and power to bring it to hand i esther into my palm here for the fingers to grip and keep lest it take wings at some other's word a mind skilled at scheming he stopped and laughed <laughs> why esther before the new moon which is in the courts of the temple on the holy hill they are at this moment celebrating passes into the next quartering i could ring the world so as to startle even caesar for know you child i have that faculty which is better than any one sense better than a perfect body better than courage and will better than experience ordinarily the best product of the longest lives the faculty divinest of men but which he stopped and laughed again not bitterly but with real zest <laughs> but which even the great do not sufficiently account while with the herd it is non-existent the faculty of drawing men to my purpose and holding them faithfully to its achievement by which as against things to be done i multiply myself into hundreds and thousands so the captains of my ships plough the seas and bring me honest returns so malik follows the youth our master and will just then a footstep was heard upon the terrace ha ha esther said i not so he is here and we will have tidings for thy sake sweet child my lily just budded i pray the lord god who has not forgotten his wandering sheep of israel that they be good and comforting now we will know if he will let thee go with all thy beauty and me with all my faculties malik came to the chair peace to you good master he said with a low obeisance and to you esther most excellent of daughters he stood before them deferentially and the attitude and the address left it difficult to define his relation to them the one was that of a servant the other indicated the familiar and friend on the other side simonides as was his habit in business after answering the salutation went straight to the subject what of the young man malik the events of the day were told quietly and in the simplest words and until he was through there was no interruption nor did the listener in the chair so much as move a hand during the narration but for his eyes wide open and bright and an occasional long-drawn breath he might have been accounted an effigy thank you thank you malik he said heartily at the conclusion you have done well no one could have done better now what say you of the young man's nationality he is an israelite good master and of the tribe of judah are you positive very positive he appears to have told you but little of his life he has somewhere learned to be prudent i might call him distrustful he baffled all my attempts upon his confidence until we started from the castalian pound going to the village of daphne Ah, place of abomination why went he there i would say from curiosity the first motive of the many who go but very strangely he took no interest in the things he saw of the temple he merely asked if it were a grecian good master the young man has a trouble of mind from which he would hide and he went to the grove i think as we go to sepulchres with our dead he went to bury it that were well if so simonides said in a low voice then louder malik the curse of the time is prodigality the poor make themselves poor as apes of the rich and the merely rich carry themselves like princes saw you signs of the weakness in the youth did he display monies coin of rome or israel 
none none good muster surely malik where there are so many inducements to folly so much i mean to eat and drink uh, surely he made you generous offer of some sort his age if nothing more would warrant that much he neither ate nor drank in my company in what he said or did malik could you in any wise detect his master idea you know they peep through cracks close enough to stop the wind give me to understand you said malik in doubt well you know we nor speak nor act much less decide grave questions concerning ourselves except as we be driven by a motive in that respect what made you of him as to that master simonides i can answer with much assurance he is devoted to finding his mother and sister that first then he has a grievance against wrong and as the missala of whom i told you had something to do with the wrong the great present object is to humiliate him the meeting at the fountain furnished an opportunity but it was put aside as not sufficiently public mm, the masala is influential said simonides thoughtfully yes but the next meeting will be in the circus well and then the son of arius will win how know you malik smiled i am judging by what he says is that all no there is a much better sign his spirit ay but malik his idea of vengeance what is its scope does he limit it to a few who did him the wrong or does he take in the many and more is his feeling but the vagary of a sensitive boy or has it the seasoning of suffering manhood to give it endurance you know malik the vengeful thought that has root merely in the mind is but a dream of idlest sort which one clear day will dissipate while revenge the passion is a disease of the heart which climbs up up to the brain and feeds itself on both alike in this question simonides for the first time showed signs of feeling he spoke with rapid utterance and with clenched hands and the eagerness of a man illustrating the disease he described good my master malik replied one of my reasons for believing the young man a jew is the intensity of his hate it was plain to me he had himself under watch as was natural seeing how long he has lived in an atmosphere of roman jealousy yet i saw it blaze once when he wanted to know ilderim's feeling towards rome and again when i told him the story of the sheikh and the wise man and spoke of the question where is he that is born king of the jews simonides leaned forward quickly ah malik his words give me his words let me judge the impression the mystery made upon him he wanted to know the exact words were they to be or born to be it appeared he was struck by a seeming difference in the effect of the two phrases simonides settled back into his pose of listening judge then said malik i told him ilderim's view of the mystery that the king would come with the doom of rome the young man's blood rose over his cheeks and forehead and he said earnestly who oh, but a herod can be king while rome endures meaning what that the empire must be destroyed before there could be another rule simonides gazed for a time at the ships and their shadows slowly swinging together in the river when he looked up it was to end the interview enough malik he said get you to eat and make ready to return to the orchard of palms you must help the young man in his coming trial come to me in the morning i will send a letter to ilderim then in an undertone as if to himself he added i may attend the circus myself when malik after the customary benediction given and received was gone simonides took a deep draught of milk and seemed refreshed and easy of mind 
Uh, put the meal down esther he said it is over she obeyed here now she resumed her place upon the arm of the chair close to him god is good to me very good he said fervently his habit is to move in mystery yet sometimes he permits us to think we see and understand him i am old dear and must go but now in this eleventh hour when my hope was beginning to die he sends me this one with a promise and i am lifted up i see the way to a great part in a circumstance itself so great that it shall be as a new birth to the whole world and i see a reason for the great gift of my riches and the end for which they were designed verily my child i take hold on life anew esther nestled closer to him as if to bring his thoughts from their far flying the king has been born he continued imagining he was still speaking to her and he must be near the half of common life balthazar says he was a child on his mother's lap when he saw him and gave him present and worship and ilderim holds it was twenty-seven years ago last december when balthazar and his companions came to his tent asking a hiding-place from herod wherefore the coming cannot now be long delayed to-night to-morrow it may be o oh, holy fathers of israel what happiness in the thought i seem to hear the crash of the falling of old walls and the clamour of a universal change ay and for the uttermost joy of men the earth opens to take rome in and they look up and laugh and sing that she is not while we are then he laughed at himself <laughs> why esther heard you ever the like surely i have on me the passion of a singer the heat of blood and the thrill of miriam and david in my thoughts which should be those of a plain worker in figures and facts there is a confusion of cymbals clashing and harp-strings loud beaten and voices of a multitude standing around a new risen throne I will put the thinking by for the present only dear when the king comes will he need money and men for as he was a child born of woman he will be but a man after all bound to human ways as you and i are and for money he will have need of getters and keepers and for the men leaders ah uh, there there see you not a broad road for my walking and the running of the youth our master and at the end of it glory and revenge for us both and and he paused struck with the selfishness of a scheme in which she had no part or good result then added kissing her and happiness for thy mother's child she sat still saying nothing then he remembered the difference in natures and the law by which we are not permitted always to take delight in the same cause or be equally afraid of the same thing he remembered she was but a girl of what are you thinking esther he said in his common homelike way if the thought have the form of a wish give it me little one while the power remains mine for power you know thing and hath its wings always spread for flight she answered with a simplicity almost childish send for him father send for him to-night and do not let him go into the circus ah he said prolonging the exclamation and again his eyes fell upon the river where the shadows were more shadowy than ever since the moon had sunk far down behind sulpius leaving the city to the ineffectual stars shall we say it reader he was touched by a twinge of jealousy if she should really love the young master oh no that could not be she was too young but the idea had fast grip and directly held him still and cold she was sixteen he knew it well on the last natal day he had gone with her to the shipyard where there was a launch 
and the yellow flag which the galley bore to its bridal with the waves had on it esther so they celebrated the day together yet the fact struck him now with the force of a surprise there are realizations which come to us all painfully mostly however such as pertain to ourselves that we are growing old for instance and more terrible that we must die such a one crept into his heart shadowy as the shadows yet substantial enough to wring from him a sigh which was almost a groan it was not sufficient that she should enter upon her young womanhood a servant but she must carry to her master her affections the truth and tenderness and delicacy of which he the father so well knew because to this time they had all been his own undividedly the fiend whose task it is to torture us with fears and bitter thoughts seldom does his work by halves in the pang of the moment the brave old man lost sight of his new scheme and of the miraculous king its subject by a mighty effort however he controlled himself and asked calmly not go into the circus esther why child it is not a place for a son of israel father rabbinical rabbinical esther is that all the tone of the inquiry was searching and went to her heart which began to beat loudly so loudly she could not answer a confusion new and strangely pleasant fell upon her the young man is to have the fortune he said taking her hand and speaking more tenderly he is to have the ships and the shekels all esther all yet i did not feel poor for thou wert left me and thy love so like the dead rachel's tell me is he to have that too she bent over him and lay her cheek against his head speak esther i will be the stronger of the knowledge in warning there is strength she sat up then and spoke as if she were truth's holy self comfort thee father i will never leave thee though you take my love i will be thy handmaiden now as ever and stooping she kissed him and more she said continuing he is comely in my sight and the pleading of his voice drew me to him and i shudder to think of him in danger yes father i would be more than glad to see him still the love that is unrequited cannot be perfect love wherefore i will wait a time remembering i am thy daughter and my mother's a very blessing of the lord art thou hester a blessing to keep me rich though all else be lost and by his holy name and everlasting life i swear thou shalt not suffer at his request a little later the servant came and rolled the chair into the room where he sat for a time thinking of the coming of the king while she went off and slept the sleep of the innocent end of chapter eleven